welcome to Metroid Dread. So, um, I'm gonna be transparent about this. I did play. I, I spent an hour last night, I was getting feel for how the game plays. I played until I got the Morph Ball. Because... I felt that was a good stopping point. Uh, which was a mistake, because I was up to like... 2 o'clock in the morning. Metroid, a virulent floating organism that drained energy from its prey through physical contact. Metroids were originally designed by the Chozo and named after their word for the ultimate warrior. Their value as a bioweapon sparked several crises and as a result, all traces of them have been eliminated. They are now extinct. That was the plot of Metroid Classic. Metroid 2 Samus, well Metroid 2 Samus Returns was her Terminator. Super Metroid was the first cloning attempt. Uh, then there's the three primes, which did link back to Metroids. That was more of a phase on incident than Metroids. Uh, I still remember Prime 3's uh, Metroids. Those things were terrifying. gelatinous parasite organism indigenous to the planet SR388. It could absorb the DNA of its host, living or dead, replicate its form, when infecting a living host. It could even access the host's memories. Ex-parasites were driven not by emotion, but by an instinct, an instinctive need to replicate and spread it to increasingly stronger hosts. Their inability to be controlled marked them as an even more dangerous than their sole predator. The Metroids. Like the Metroids, they are believed to be extinct. That was the plot of Metroid Fusion, one of my personal favorite Metroid games. Speaking of fusion, this is Samus getting hit by the X Parasite, getting, which led to the creation of the fusion armor. God, I love these visuals, they're so good. No Metroid surviving on SR388. It became infested with the X. Horrifying parasites capable of imitating any living being. Unaware of this, I set foot on the planet, got infected, and almost died. Oh God, this brings me back. The only thing that saved me was a vaccine created from Metroid DNA, which also left me uniquely able to oppose the X. Its ability was tested immediately when I went to a biological space laboratory's BSL research station to investigate a distress signal. Oh god, all the bosses and then mm, this thing. There I battled many powerful X forms, including the SAX which was the X mimicking me in my power suit at full strength. I eventually eliminated the X menace on SR388 by setting the BSL research station on the collision course with the planet. Uh, so yeah, the fusion suit is created, it's a bioorganic suit, even more organic than the um, standard Varia suit. Uh, she wasn't able to use a cold beam anymore because it messed with, because of her DNA. I think I might have seen it first. After that, the X and Metroids were just memories, or so we thought. Just so when it all seemed over, the Galactic Federation received a mysterious video transmission. Showed an X, alive and in the wild. Through analysis, Thorough analysis proved the video was real, although the sender was unknown. The transmission was traced to a particular planet. It was called ZDR. If the X had somehow escaped extinction out there, it would pose a threat to the entire galaxy. 
the Galactic Federation dispatched a research team of seven EMMI to investigate. An EMMI is a large research robot designed to capture field samples and extract their DNA. Their incredible mobility and protective plating made it the strongest stuff in the universe. Practically guaranteed the mission success. Yeah, because we've never heard that before. But not long after their arrival on ZDR, all communication was lost. Oh, I love this new look though. What is happening on ZDR? Is the planet really infested with X? As the only one immune to the parasites, it's up to me to go there and find out. Yeah, I love this new suit. I like how it looks like a a more reinforced and trimmed down variant of the fusion suit. Like, and not even trimmed down, more cleaned up. Like the fusion suit looked like a mess. Makes sense, because it was. I also, I love the white and orange trim. It works so well. Do a Gumpla on this new color scheme. Get orange. We'll soon be entering ZGR's atmosphere. The bounty for this mission does not seem appropriate. The risk clearly outweighs the reward. Good to hear you again, Adam. Here in T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, so good seeing this all again. I, I mean, one of the first things we recorded for the channel was a bit of Metroid Fusion. There she is, um... Hmm... Something seems wrong with my armor. That elevator leads to the depths of an undercover facility. Signal quality is likely to be low. Remote communication remains useful. Try to connect to the facility's network when you reach the bottom. That way, they can be in contact. Any objections, lady? from a standing position.
looks like we've been reset. Sliding is the new mechanic, and I actually really have been enjoying messing with it. I like it because it's faster than using um, the Morph Ball, and it gives a little bit more variety. Red Block's going to be destroyed by that. To be honest, there's a little bit more tutorial in this, which yeah, I could go either way with that. Uploading data. So you've accessed the network station. Well done, Samus. I have reviewed your vital signs and video log from the data you uploaded. I've run a full analysis, but I cannot account for why you lost consciousness. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. Whatever caused these changes seems to have stripped you of most abilities. You might call it physical amnesia. That brings me to your assailant. I am checking the Federation database against your video log. It appears to have been a Chozo. The attacker's identity is not yet clear. But I thought the Chozo were all dead. I have determined that you are somewhere within the depths of ZDR. Your top priority should be to return to your ship on the surface. This situation is precarious. Trust your instincts as you navigate upward. This planet appears to consist of multiple areas. Shuttles, elevators, and other modes of transport connect them. Keep an eye out for ways to reach the surface. The ship's location is marked on your global map. Check if you may encounter pockets of low temperature. Your metro DNA renders you vulnerable to such environments. Spending time in cold areas will be harmful to you. There are many such cold areas scattered underground. Do not enter them with your basic power suit. One final thing. Underground interference is preventing radio transmissions. Check in with me at any network stations you find. Yeah, this game isn't as handholdy as um oh not handholdy, but like Adam doesn't feel like he's a hand as much of a handler as he is in Metroid Fusion. Based from what I've encountered so far, which granted not much. The door I can't break through yet. And then there's the return of the melee counter from uh, Sam's Returns. Or at least the remake of Sam's Returns. You know what? I like this. I like it more in this one. Feels weird though, not having the morph ball. Like this. This, I think, was a little unnecessary. Basically, it's just saying that, um, if the area is glowing, there's a collectible, like, missile tanks or E-tanks, that kind of stuff. Creepy.
is insanely hard to pronounce with the EMMI e e attacks. I, I still haven't figured it out. Red Blaster. The energy from the central unit is transformed the arm cannon into an Omega Cannon. The Omega Blaster is online. There you go. You just gotta aim for the glowing red warp when you have the Omega Cannon. Kill them. Still, these things are creepy. And once it's done, the cannon reverted back to its normal state. Also, I like the fact that um you can actually see the door struggle sometime, which lets you know like, oh, this door is um this door will open something on the other side. Well, that, that's the other side. It was uh, a door you encountered that was locked, so it's just one way at first. And my, my greatest foe, water. Then there's the. On the goddamn roof. Looks like you can't fit through tight spaces. But it can crawl along the ceiling. Mm. Oh, shit, I think still keeps me the fuck out. Another missile pot, missile tank. Uploading data. Both heavy you encountered were clearly trying to capture you. They may have been hacked. If so, it's reasonable to assume all Emmy will be hostile. Emmy right. sent out a pulse to detect vibrations in the air within a certain range. Essentially, they can hear you. Upon detecting vibrations, an Emmy enters surveillance mode to track their source. Stay out of its line. An Emmy that has seen you will begin pursuit. Part of the pursuit protocol is to seal the Emmy's own exits. You will be trapped inside. To survive, you must leave its range of pursuit. Evade the enemy and it will disengage. This will also unseal the exits. An enemy never leaves its assigned zone. Their control system must permit them to operate only within that range. 
I estimate a 99% probability of death if an enemy captures you. There may be a very small opportunity to escape, but exploiting this window will be virtually impossible. It's not wrong. The enemy are immune to your current weapons. You lack the unique energy used to defeat the first enemy. Your only option now is to evade capture and find an exit. Your highest priority in an enemy zone should be simply to survive. And at the end of oh. I can't do that without more faults. What I can do with this one is I have to listen for it. I find the enemies to be even more terrifying than the um, SAX used to be. Just because um, the SAX, well, it was creepy as fuck. It only really chased you like once or twice. It wasn't like a constant threat. These things have whole areas devoted to them. Make them a little bit more of a consistent threat. Then I'll be honest, the music for them really helps. Like the, the whole atmosphere at the end for the enemy areas is amazing. I don't know how I feel about like pretty much every area we go to. The map room, the network room, and dedicated rooms all being save stations. I'm kind of me towards that. <laughs> 